What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Fandom Wire. My name is Anthony A. Perez, and today we're going to be talking about Godzilla and Kong. It's been a few weeks since their latest installment, The New Empire, hit theaters, and it's divided fans. Many, like myself, have said it's a fantastic follow-up to many films in the franchise that honors the long-lasting legacy of the Godzilla and King Kong franchise, and it's just a big, fun, over-the-top, vibrant, action-packed movie, while others have found it to be dull and completely uninspired, just mindless action that doesn't really have much to say, nor does it have a characters that are all that compelling. <laughs> And while I can agree that the human narrative is nothing that's absolutely going to make you excited, I think that the action, the visuals, the monster stuff, and all of the stuff they do around just expanding the lore of the monster stuff, that alone for me is just such a great time, and ultimately lends itself to just being a fun, over-the-top blockbuster that asks you as an audience member to sit down, drink a soda, eat some popcorn, stuff your face with candy, and just enjoy yourself watching a gigantic radioactive lizard and a fantastically large ape going toe to toe or in the case of this movie working together to fight off a new villain known as the scar king and there are so many elements about the new empire that really just honor the legacy of the franchise so today i'm going to be defending why i feel like going absurd was the right choice to make with godzilla kong the new empire but i think it's important to recognize where this franchise has come from ahead of time Godzilla came out in 1954, and at the time, it only came out about 10 years or so from the event of World War II, and was a direct response, of course, to war and nuclear damage and the way that that can affect the population of any civilization. And so Godzilla, of course, has always been a living and breathing metaphor for war, grief, and all of those different things, and most notably, nuclear damage. And over the course of years, like many other horror icons, such as Freddy Krueger, Godzilla would slowly move from being a horror monster into being a pop culture figure that kids and adults alike started to love more and more and it became less about grounded narratives and more about aliens big over-the-top actions and monsters going toe-to-toe -to -toe in every possible way they possibly can it's really awesome when you look through the lineage of films coming out from Godzilla there's about 38 Godzilla films with most of those coming out of Japan and Toho with a few of those coming from America in the mix, you also have a slew of various video games, novels, comic books, as well as cartoon series, animated movies. There's so much around Godzilla. And as far as King Kong, you have 13 to 14 movies, depending on which ones you count, including things like animated movies, animated TV shows, as well as video games, comics, novels, and all that jazz. Between both Godzilla, Kong, and the various spin-offs that various other kaijus in the franchise would get that are not directly tied to Godzilla or Kong, there are easily 50 to 60 different films in this franchise where you can binge a bunch of individuals in big rubber suits slapping each other around which oftentimes led to what these movies were really all about at a certain point you start off with a franchise for both that are pretty grounded and they're just about big animals that usually have something to say about humanity, about war, and about the way that it affects those individuals. But as time went on, as I've already mentioned, it just started to get more and more and more ridiculous. And you look at something like 1965's Invasion of Astro Monster after Godzilla defeats King Ghidorah on Planet X, where he gives us that sweet little victory dance that I think at this point has gone down as one of the funniest moments in all of Godzilla. Godzilla history. And just a couple of years later, Manila, the son of Godzilla, would be introduced in 1967's Son of Godzilla. King Kong is similar, with the original coming out in 1933 and again having a lot to say about humanity and control over nature, only for literally less than a year later for us to get Son of Kong, which was an interesting film to say the least and even in this latest film which is pretty awesome to see there is a baby kong reference with suko a new character that was introduced who is a very fun and likable character that's added to the new film the new empire and i think with a film like godzilla minus one from the tail end of 2023 that is now an oscar winning film and the first to do so in the franchise i think it's easy to see how godzilla can continually be a very compelling villain and monster in a film that actually has a well 
well-written narrative around the humans that allows you to care for them and actually feel something when something goes wrong for them and actually have fear of Godzilla again. And I think a film like Godzilla Kong The New Empire existing at the same time that something like Minus One can, I think is pretty awesome. I love the idea of a more grounded, beautifully cinematic action movie that is a drama in a lot of ways more often than not that has Godzilla almost like in Jaws a monster that you can see here and there that has big key moments, but the movie mainly focuses on its human characters. But I also love the fact that we can have a movie like Godzilla x Kong The New Empire that ultimately just says, hey, listen, we it's great that we have this grounded drama that has, you know, Godzilla being a metaphor once again for war and grief and nuclear damage. But let's also just have fun with this premise because so much of the franchise has. And Godzilla has gone through various eras over the course of time with all of them having different levels of seriousness, metaphors, or flat out ridiculousness. One of the most notable ones for the ridiculous has to be the Showa era that went from 1954 where it started to 1975. There was so much ridiculous over the top action in that era by the time we got to the very end of it. After that you have the Heisei era from 1985 to 1995, the Tristar era that was very shortly lived from 1998 to 1999, the Millennium Era from 1999 to 2004, and now we have the Reiwa Era coming from Japan that started with Shin Godzilla in 2016 and continues on with things like Godzilla Minus One, and the Monsterverse Era that's the films that are coming out of Legendary Pictures that started in 2014 and go on till today. And in all of those eras, you have something done completely different with Godzilla a lot of times, sometimes just leaning straight into the ridiculous. You just have some some of the most ridiculous, big, over-the-top action, hilarious moments where these characters are lunging at each other in ways that seem so goofy by today's standards, and I find it so funny when we have these movies that have really top-tier, over-the-top CGI that is allowed to show us these action sequences in ways we could never even imagine, the ways that our brain wanted to imagine them as kids, but the older films are still kind of looked at with a little bit more positivity, and I think that these newer films are going to go down in history as time goes on and Godzilla fans look back as some of the cooler looking and action-packed films in the franchise. And while I've already mentioned a couple of goofy elements like Godzilla's victory dance or even Godzilla's son Manila, there's still so many other things that happened in the past in the Godzilla franchise that are worth mentioning. And one of the most notable things about these films that people oftentimes forget is the alien element of it. There have been so many different alien species that have appeared over the course of decades in the Godzilla films, some like the Zillions, the Kylax, the Simians, the Millennians, and then there's also the two alien twins that we've seen over the course of the film that are the Sobesian and Laura, two tiny humanoid girls that are the priestess to the guardians of the mortal Mothra who look after the offspring of Mothra at a certain point. And then there's Godzilla versus Gigan where we literally see Godzilla speaking to Anguirus via speech bubbles. I mean, if that doesn't tell you already how ridiculous this franchise has been, then I don't know what else to tell you. The Godzilla and King Kong franchise has been jam-packed with aliens and all kinds of ridiculous things. Even the cameo from the 1998 Godzilla appearing briefly for the fight at the end of Godzilla Final Wars in the 2000s. It goes without saying that there's been so many films in the Godzilla and King Kong franchise that have been incredibly grounded. The originals for both, of course, as well as things like the 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong or the most recent Godzilla Minus One from 2023. We've had so many fantastic installments that are allowed to have grounded, realistic, and very nuanced performances and stories, but also so many dozens of stories in this franchise that are just about the monsters kicking ass. And I love to go back and revisit it and see the silly of the aliens and the children of these various monsters, Godzilla speaking with speech bubbles or him doing a victory dance. There's so many things over the course of the franchise that have led themselves to being absurd, ridiculous, and that's why we love these films. And while I do appreciate something more grounded, I'm here in defense of how ridiculous this franchise can be. And I love the idea that we can live in a world where we can have the grounded serious installments, but we can also have stuff that just ask us as audience members to shut our brain off, have pure escapism, and just watch some giant monsters slap each other. So where do you stand on it? Do you think that all of these films from Godzilla and King Kong should be more grounded and have something to say and be more like Godzilla Minus One? Or do you feel like we should continually get stuff just like Godzilla Kong, the new empire that consistently leans into the absurd, over-the-top action with these monsters and allows us to just have a serviceable story? Or do you want to do away with that? Or do you want to live in a world where we have both kinds of things, which personally is the world I want to live in? Again, I'm 
support of the fact that we should have more and more absurd Godzilla and King Kong stuff. As somebody who grew up loving this stuff, I like the balance of the two, but I never want to see this kind of Godzilla and King Kong content going away. And I hope that you guys feel the same, but I look forward to hearing all of you guys chime in down below in the comments. And if you guys want to see more stuff about TV, movies, and all sorts of other entertainment, definitely hit subscribe here on Fandom Wire, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.